Welcome back. All Sports Western New York. An exciting week for the Buffalo Sabres. They host Columbus Thursday night. It's their home opener. Brian Gianta named the captain today by Ted Nolan. But coming up at the end of the month, it is the opening of the Harbor Center, Canisius, Ohio State, on Friday night. We had a chance to sit down with the president of the Harbor Center, John Comal, and find out everything there is to know about this new state-of-the-art hockey facility. John, you're, you're officially going to open up Halloween night. Canisius is going to be on the ice. The last time we talked, this seemed so far down the road. Now it's finally here. Uh, no question. Uh, said there's no more next month, or uh, we're we're there. Um, we're you know now inside that 30-day window, and uh, everybody's excited and, and pointed toward uh, uh, the starting line. You said the 31st and first, uh, Canisius and Ohio State, big weekend for uh, the Golden Griffins, and uh, we kick off with the U16-18 tournament with some really top teams from around the country. So. Uh, uh, it'll be a lot of treats that night. No tricks, all treats, and it'll be an exciting time to be at Harbor Center. When fans walk in that first weekend, how much of the facility will be operational? Uh, we're working hard to uh, make everything but the hotel uh, as functional as it can be right from uh, the get-go. That's been our effort to bring everything online. Uh, concurrently, the vagaries of construction and uh, buttoning up loose ends, uh, you know, we'll take it one day at a time. But um, there'll be, uh, you know, everybody will be ready to or, you know, rock and roll. And as I've said to others, uh, we're going vertical. Uh, coming out of the gate, our ramp-ups have uh, been happening. So uh, you'll see, uh, you know, both rinks functional and all the amenities. Uh, that go with that, whether it be uh, off-ice training with impact and uh, the features functionalities that we'll afford from locker rooms to uh, the rapid shot and you know, others, uh, classrooms up top. Uh, downstairs, uh, Tim Horton's uh, 716, if not online by then, will be uh, coming up shortly thereafter. So we're talking days uh, in terms of trying to coordinate and choreograph everything. For the hockey purists, break down the rinks. What are the two rinks going to look like? Uh, in its simplest terms, uh, you'll have one that seats and accommodates 2,000 uh, with a lot of bells and whistles, and you have another that seats a couple hundred um, that will have bells and whistles that you don't typically see, but will, in uh, appearance, look more like your traditional uh, rink. Uh, we'll use them both interchangeably for uh, all of our events and activities, uh, whether it be our YDP programs week in and week out, whether it be our academy training, frankly, whether it be some of our world championships. That said, Canisius, Junior Sabres, championship games that'll be on the feature rink which is really uh, a special place and it'll be a real wow factor there with the wooden trusses uh, just the other amenities and uh, creature comforts uh, for the fans we're as focused on the fans in the stands as we are the players uh, and coaches on, on the ice so it'll be a really special place uh, to be in not your typical 2,000 seat uh, arena it'll be uh, one that'll make everyone proud everyone smile and uh, look forward to coming back I know one of the focal points was to make the facility the center of amateur hockey in western New York and in, in, in this entire region. Right. Um, who are who's partnering up with you so far? Who, who you know who will this, uh, who will call this rink home uh, from what western New York? Well, first of all, it's like Canisius, as we've talked about a couple times already. Uh, this will be their uh, home ice, um, as will uh, the Junior Sabers, uh, not just the Junior A Sabers that have uh, otherwise uh, been playing locally. They've uh, expanded, added six additional teams and uh, they're off to a great start uh, themselves with their campaign obviously the amateur youth hockey seasons uh, already underway uh, and uh, they've already started playing against some of the top teams in the country and the really good news is uh, many of those same teams uh, in both the United States and Canada are anxious and excited to come play at Harbor Center so not only with Canisius will you see uh, high-end hockey with other D1 teams from around the country you'll see the same with the Junior Sabres and then uh, ECC uh, the Cats uh, will also uh, call it the, their home ice as well. So on weekends, uh, you're going to have a steady diet of really high-end, very competitive uh, hockey uh, in addition to what otherwise will occur uh, throughout the, you know, the week, uh, month in, month out. From looking at the website, uh, you know, the, the, the fact uh, answers is to will there be high school teams, can adult leagues play? I mean, you've pretty much left it open. You're pretty flexible to try to get as many activities and as many nights uh, of hockey on that ice as possible. At least that's what it seems. Uh, absolutely. Uh, give uh, Nick uh, Fatty and his team uh, tons of credit here. We started off with an approach that we want to have an elite facility uh, and provide elite uh, and premier training. On the other hand, want to be very inclusive. Uh, 
the interest uh, to come and participate and play at Harbor Center has been uh, phenomenal. Uh, we're virtually sold out uh, to the extent we are. It's of our own choosing in terms of ice in general and prime time in particular um, in these initial six, seven months. Um, and we're doing everything we can to give as many people the opportunity to not only be in the building but uh, step on the ice. Uh, our, our focus is about increasing the numbers uh, as well as uh, the level of uh, play. So we want to create exposure and opportunity right down to uh, open skates before Sabre games. Uh, we hear them practicing in the background. Uh, open skates for each of those games in addition to, <clears throat> frankly, other opportunities for businesses and organizations uh, to, to skate uh, on Harbor Center ice. And you're going to rent skates out for the public? We will. Uh, we've got uh, a great uh, skate rental facility, so make it real easy. Uh, not expecting people to haul their skates down uh, and then carry them into the game or uh, otherwise uh, we'll have uh, high quality product uh, available for rent and uh, again want to make it easy uh, for people to enjoy and experience Harbor Center. Speaking of easy I'm sure and we covered this last time but I want to reiterate that for those who are concerned about coming to downtown Buffalo maybe the folks from the suburbs parking will be accessible to them. <laughs> parking will be uh, very accessible. Uh, our ramp uh, again the two rinks in on top of a 750 space uh, parking garage parking ramp so in and of itself uh, we expect to be able to accommodate uh, those who will be using our facility uh, day in and day out. Uh, special event nights uh, whether that be uh, activity we're having are here at First Niagara Center. We've got the benefit of both ramps, a uh, better part of 1,200 cars and the, the ramp attached here, so there's 2,000 cars and then you talk about all the surface lots. So uh, we've worked hard to ensure that uh, there isn't a reason not to experience Harbor Center because you can't park close enough. Uh, we'll do everything we can and uh, for the most part those uh, participating and tending uh, will have little if any charge uh, for their parking. We understand we want to make it not only accessible uh, uh, but uh, you know, low, low if not no cost uh, for most, if not all, users of our uh, facility. Uh, I've had the opportunity a couple times to be involved in the construction of so, you know certain facilities. Uh, there's always an in, you know they evolve over time uh, from the original blueprints for whatever reason, perhaps construction restraints or you know imaginatory ideas that have come along. H how is this project since you've been involved? Has it evolved in any way? Um, Pre my involvement, it uh, evolved, I think, uh, meaningfully, Bob. Uh, initially, when uh, you listened to Cliff Benson tell the story, he and uh, Terry uh, you know, looked at uh, the Webster Block uh, parking lot, they thought then about a couple ice rinks and what they could do to change the look and game of uh, hockey. Um, since then, it's rapidly evolved, and whether it's Kim's involvement or just those that really seize the, the moment to maximize the opportunity with the hotel, with the two restaurants, and really to further enhance the features and functionality. So the evolution's been more uh, to round out that uh, Harbor Center experience or make it even that much uh, better. So uh, I hate to use the phrase bells and whistles in, in, a, in a glib way. Uh, the features functionality here will be uh, unparalleled and unrivaled so it won't just look like a really great place uh, the users will have the benefits of uh, <clears throat> experience and, and amenities that <clears throat> excuse me are uh, un unprecedented and we're gonna be right back with the second part of this interview with John Como but just think about it how cool is this you can take your family down there prior to a Sabre game take them on the ice at the Harbor Center for an open skate have dinner and go in and watch the Sabres play. I can't, I'm not saying you can make a, a regular diet of that, but that's something that could be a very special occasion and I think pretty cool. We'll be back, second part of John Como right after this. <laughs> 